Hey guys, how is it going? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history of living in your aquarium. How is everybody? We doing good? I'm doing good. So I am going to be in mobile mode today. I want to say hi to all y'all hanging out in here first. We got Lady Rorschach. We got Buttface. And Buttface, I saw your donation to my AGA trip. I want to thank you so much. You know, I wasn't going to uh, beg for money or anything. Obviously, Alan set up the uh, donation, the GoFundMe for it. But now that we're at $600 and basically we need to raise another 400 and then I can go I can make a bunch of videos, visit the Shed Aquarium, which is the oldest in America. Um, also go to the Botanical Gardens in uh, Chicago and also meet some of the most dedicated and informed plant, aquatic plant researchers and botanists, including Crystal Castleman, a whole bunch of others in the world, uh, as well as go to the auctions. And anybody who's donating, Alan and I have said, if you donate to the AGA fund, so that I can afford to fly out there and go. Um, I've missed all the other conventions this year because of just health issues. And I was just going to miss this one too. But then Alan uh, decided to take upon himself. And so many of you have kindly donated to the fund. So we're only $400 away from the total. And uh, even if we don't get there, it's like now I've made up my mind that I'll just have to fork out the $400 difference because going is so important you know it's only every two years and it's somewhere in the world and it happens to be in america and in chicago um so i'm pretty excited uh about going but there's a link pinned in the comments if you guys want to support my trip there i promise i'll be making at least six videos from the trip i'm going to be going for like four nights uh if i go and uh i'm pretty sure i'm going to go regardless also um it sounds like so, um it sounds like Luke uh, down in California is going to be actually sharing a hotel room with me, uh, which also helps bring costs down. So that's super. I'm super stoked. I don't care if I sleep on the floor. I wasn't kidding when I said that. So whatever happens, happens. I think it'll be fun. But um, if you didn't notice, uh, I chopped off all my hair in the middle of a mad manic rant. Uh, basically the, the back looks like doggy doo doo, uh, because I just use scissors. I, I literally use these scissors, you know, the same scissors I use in the fish room, same brand, um, scotch, like the tape. But, uh, I, I had enough hair on all my head that I could leave this much and I still had nine or 10 inches for locks of love. So I can give it to the nonprofit that makes uh wigs for kids with cancer so i was excited about that um but yeah so let's see here we have some plans for tonight for this episode but first i want to say hello to y'all so david rayner what's up morning droogs yeah i i i i uh butt face yes i saw the donation you rock first class fish always good to see you uh, David Rayner, yes, good to see you here. Three in the morning, can't sleep. Well, I can sympathize with that nonsense. Uh, Sky Dancer, how are you, my dear? Uh, great to see you. Uh, also, Aquaballs, what's up, George? How's, your, how's it going, man? John Monroe, hello. Freaky Fish Lady Holly, hello. I think there's going to be a break in the heat. I don't know if there's a break in the heat for you, but I have some fish that need to come your way. Um, so I'll, I need to email you again. It's, we had the longest streak Seattle's ever had of over 90 degree days, uh, which we also had last year and the year before. So apparently Seattle's just going to be real hot in summer now. Um, let's see who else is hiding in here. We've got, uh, Mick, what's up? Who's that long haired hippie? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't know who he is. I guess, I guess he's gone, right? Linda Worth, what's up? Mark Sturlson, uh, J-Man, what's up? Average Fish Keeper, Brian Levy, Adam Shook, Hillbilly Aquatic, Corundulin Works, uh, Fish and Floral, what's up? Yep, new do. Thank you, guys. Janelle Lee Reed, I'm glad you like the hair. White Fish Salad, love the name. What's going on? Uh, Irene Van Duel, hello. 
I love the comments lately you've been leaving. They're always interesting and you share your personal stories. I always like hearing, you know, what people experience growing up and in their part of the world, whatever, whatever it may be, if it's the same or different as my life. Jerry Serple Morris, what's up? Stephanie D, thank you very much. Alishon, hello. Um, Paul McCarthy, hello, 186 Element. Hello, hello, hello. Ticket to space, what's up? Looking handsome, brother. Uh, I'm fairly tired, so I'm going to hang for a while and then uh, catch the rest in the morning. Well, there's no shame in that, man. You get rest. Take care of yourself, bro. All right, let's see here. Amateur Aquatic, what's up? Thanks. Yeah, I'm feeling fresh as well. Don't forget the Benadryl and the cortisone shot ahead of time. Yeah, I know. I know. You know how it goes. Uh, you do. Uh, anybody with autoimmune issues feels the pain. But uh, just going out simply on these trips, if I go through the brush, like with a machete or a stick to kind of knock things down or whatever, I end up just wrecked from doing that. So I try to stay on paths or trails or open areas unless I'm really like Jones in for catching whatever it is in that area. Uh, you want, uh, we want a fund, a good productive time, Mr. Alex Williamson. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for running Jillian works. Um, let's see here. Zana Dudu, what's up? You like the haircut? All right. Thank you. Um, that's the same one you use. All right. Uh, looks much better. Well, I kind of like looking like a transient, you know, I can kind of stealthily sneak in, but now I'll be much, much better more prepared uh so like i did a thing the other day uh when i said that i can't go back i meant like i can't go back with uh the hair i can't go back with the ada or the uh aga funding like i can't put that cat back in the bag and also i can't go back uh to a golf course because uh i told them with a little clipboard in hand that i was doing a survey and i said uh real quickly that i'm from citizen S scientists united with a secret history living near aquarium and uh, real quick, and basically they're like, what? And I was like, well, it'd be a shame if we have to drain all these ponds, but I just need to take a survey to see which fish are establishing naturally versus which are stocked. So what have you stocked your course with? Because we can't have any invasives, especially in the same water drainage as Thornton Creek, which is right on your property here. But if I could get in there and take a look with my dip net, I would really appreciate it. It would really uh, make a difference. And, you know, then in theory, wouldn't have to... Uh, uh, um, uh, drain the thing. Hey, Curran Julian works says lots of love sells wigs for alopecia patients, not cancer, but there are nonprofit options for cancer. Oh, well, that is good to know. I will have to do more research. You know, I gave to them 20 years ago, probably. Yeah, literally 20 years ago. Uh, and again, after that, and they used to be a chill thing, but now, um, now I don't think uh, uh, that's a bummer. I mean, it's like Susan G. Komen for the cure started out okay, and then it just turned into doggy doo doo. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely. Uh, the CEO's a billionaire. Wow. All right. Well, I'll have to definitely look into a good place then. Um, uh, TJ's new life. Good on you, mate. I'm dealing with my third round of cancer, and I'm proud of you helping kids. Well. I didn't give away the hair yet, so uh, for now, I'm still a greedy hair hoarder, but I, I'm sorry to hear your battle in that, and, uh, you know, stay strong. Uh, hang in there. I know a lot of people who've had to fight that, for sure. Also, yes, it's hot. It's hot here in Seattle, too. I think it's like 87 or something. Uh, it, it got real hot today, uh, quickly, like it was cool, and then just got hot at the end of the day, but... We are, um, uh, oh, okay, we'll wait. Yeah, sure, if you're moving, Holly, that's all good. I mean, you tell me when and we'll work it out. What are you doing? Oh, I thought it was a dead rat. Get over here. You can't just bug the production here. You need to be in the scene if you're going to be doing things. This is the ponytail. Well, let's, hey, let's, let's, uh, so, yeah. And, uh, what? There's also about a trash can full of hair, too. Like, my hair was thick, and I've been all paranoid that my hair's falling out because every time I take my ponytail out, 
there'd be like 15 or 20 hairs on it. And I take a shower and it looks like Chewbacca was being like cloned from the toilet scum or something, the shower scum. Uh, but no, alas, it, it, I guess my hair is okay. I might have a weird hairline kind of starting, but I won't complain considering I'm like, wait, we're here, uh, considering, you know, getting into my mid thirties, you know, so whatever. Um, all right. So let me try to catch up with where chat's actually at. Just want to say rest in peace, Olivia Newton, John. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Craig, what's going on? Good to see you, man. Uh, or should I say mate? Uh, all right. Let's get to the point, Alex. So what are we doing? Johnny from Dan's Fish, definitely research locks of love before giving your hair. Yeah, definitely will. Um, I appreciate knowing that. Uh, okay. The Yeti, you didn't miss a darn thing other than me making my hair out to be a bigger deal than it is. I did what, you know, what, what was symbolic about it, too. Like, because I have to do weird little symbolic rebellions or, or protests in, you know, every aspect of my life because I'm a crazy person. But basically, and Ken, hello, welcome, uh, is that uh, when I, everyone says hello, Laura. Um, and also uh, when, when the lockdown happened, I had just cut my hair and I buzzed it, if you look at those videos, to like as short as my beard, like as short as I cut it in a decade. And uh, all of a sudden that stuff all, unfolded and so i said i'm not cutting my hair until this is over 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 like no more no more being told whatever's and uh now that i'm booked for a trip out to florida i'm gonna be going hopefully to chicago uh i'm also gonna be going to um uh, ohio later and then uh also to portland to speak so now that all that's going on Honey, I love you. I'm going to move. I love you. Well, yes, but it's not your fault. I mean, I'm just like, that's a real loud chicken sizzling. But I can see the audio levels. I love you, honey. I'll be back. All right, guys. So what we're doing tonight is I'm going to take you on a magic carpet ride. No, uh, we've got these parks right in my neighborhood where I've been catching a lot of the fish that I catch. So I thought it might be fun for y'all to come along and just ask any questions. We'll go on a little walk, a little nature hike, if you will. And uh, so, yeah, let's go and do that. Um, so let me unplug from the uh, Wi-Fi so I can actually go do this. Um, all right. Oh, the budgies are singing to me. All right. Right on. No data stored. False advertising. Um, are you talking about locks of love? Because yes. Um, let's see here. Uh, Gardaki's Playground. Hello. Hello. Where in Ohio? I am. Uh, I'm not speaking in Ohio. I'm just going to my wife's uh, dad's birthday party in uh In Columbus, and I think that's in um, early November is when we're doing that. But um, I fully understand that uh, we're on Wi-Fi now. It may get kind of choppy, um, but which park you guys want to go to? We have a park about two or three blocks in either direction. One is a still a big bog, and it's in the woods. It's going to be darker. But that's where, you know, there's bullfrogs. Sometimes we find salamanders. There's blue herons there frequently. And uh, lots more turtles at that park. I've caught sunfish, catfish, um, sculpin, and uh, and bass and, and pumpkin seeds there. Whereas the other park is pretty open. Lighting should be better. Should have clearer angles if I just set up this tripod, that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, it should be, um, I don't know, should be pretty straightforward. 
Um, whichever park has the best Wi-Fi. Well, let's go to the one next to the highway. Then I'm going to show you what a quick drive this is. I'm not on any busy streets or anything. I'm literally just going. Well, you'll see how close it is. And I'm just driving to save time. Otherwise, we'd probably have uh, a bunch of wasted time. Maybe we'll have time to go to both. All right. Let's go. And then also, we'll look at any aquatic plants or anything. Now, whenever I am hunting for fish, collecting fish and plants in the city, it's a bummer, but I bring Narcan. If you don't know what this is, it reverses opiate overdoses. I've had to use it twice out while out and about in urban parks, collecting mushrooms or foraging or um, fishing. So it's just kind of a bummer that that's a thing. but. Um, I mean, two people's lives have been saved by it that I know of. And I mean, talk about the place where they give it out. I mean, I know everybody there's used it a half a dozen times, too. And, you know, one time on our anniversary, I don't know if it's as bad everywhere else as it is in Seattle. I know a lot of places are really bad. But um, one of the. Come on. One of the. Uh, people we had to use it on my wife and i it was our our anniversary our fifth anniversary of marriage and uh we came across this kid who was blue in the face his lips were purple his skin was like bluish white and uh he was a native uh kid uh from one of the local tribes and he was in downtown seattle and he was literally like you could tell that he'd been crawling and like collapsed on the ground and people were stepping over this kid who was clearly a kid. He didn't look like, Oh, maybe he's a teenager. Like he looked like a kid and it turned out he was 14, but we used the Narcan on him. We had the injectable kind and uh, we used it on him and uh, it brought him back. Uh, and then the medics had to use it two more times, but it turned out that he was a runaway from an abusive home and uh you know we sat while he came to and while they tried to figure stuff out and we went and got him a drink and stuff but um you know he refused to go with the ambulance uh but it turned out that his older brother and father had given him a dose of something like in pill form that overdosed and, and killed him basically and they just left him there uh so child protective services i guess came and then we left but I mean, it's just a thing to say, like, you don't know who it could be. I mean, we had a good friend who was a construction worker and uh, not at all a user of even like pot or anything like he'd have a beer once a week. Well, he had a sword back at work and somebody was like, oh, just take one of these. It's, it's like a like a, um, you know, a, a, for your back, whatever. It's like a Tylenol. And he took it and it was a little blue pill. And anybody who's been on the streets in in the u.s or canada knows what that means uh and uh it killed him about 45 minutes later he was home alone he, he, he just died sitting up watching tv uh with one pill uh so i definitely don't care what the story is there's some people that you're kind of like uh well they deserve that or this or whatever you want to say and i i don't think that's fair for me to assess i'd rather just save them and find out later uh but i come into contact with a lot of those kind of people um while out doing this stuff so just wanted to mention that i do that and bring that and that it would be good for anybody to try that uh or grab some of that especially if they give it out free at your libraries or at pharmacies near you all right, let's see here. You saved your mate's life in King's Cross around 15 years ago. Scared the... Yeah, I understand. That's for sure. Um, all right. So, we're at the park already. And uh, this park's awesome in that no one's ever here i hope my sound i mean i hope the sound it's not going to be amazing sound or video but i hope it's not terrible um but we're at the park and i've got my rubbing alcohol okay i got all my stuff 
And what I usually use, my handy dandy net. Hey, George, welcome. And uh, let's see here. And uh, Tom Wilson, I don't care if you're a user. No one deserved to die like that. Yeah, no, exactly. Especially not people who are young or, you know, don't know what they're doing. Someone, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's a bad situation right now. It's not like it used to be where you, where you had to pick up, you know, uh, something and inject something. It's not like that. It is now you just, one little pill can do it. And it looks exactly like what would come from the pharmacy. So in any case, I'm done talking about that. I'm sure that thoroughly demonetized everything, which is a bummer that you can't talk about those things. But here we are at the little park. And this bog, uh, if you missed my bog videos, this is a spot that was sacred to Native Americans. And Native Americans, all the way from Haida Gwaii, which is an island around 900 miles north of here, uh, came down here, as well as all the way from just north of San Francisco, the Klamath tribe, and the Klakawaka, tr Klakawaka tribe and uh, the Tsimshian tribe, all of them would come here. First, they'd land at Salmon Bay in Ballard, which is modern day Seattle. They would wait for the fish to come in and they would help the local Coast Salish tribes like the Tulalip, the Duwamish and the Stillaguamish, um, Skykomish, all of them. They would help them with uh, processing the amount of salmon that they had to dry. And so, well, actually, I shouldn't say the Haida did that because the Haida actually came and would raid uh, and cause war and, and get slaves from them. But basically, <laughs> the other people would come down and they'd help process all of the, what was caught. And then from there, they would... Uh, they would beat it out into uh, flat, like jerky, like uh, substances, and uh, from there they would then uh, uh, add berries and turn it into pemmican, dry it out, so that it would last all year. So it was a big trading spot, literally this park here. Well, when white people got here, uh, it was homesteaded, and they put the natives on a reservation nearby, and then they kept moving the reservation farther and farther away. And then they, um, well, originally, actually, they put them on a reservation here, and they didn't say a word. They were just like, oh, this land sucks. And then it turned out that, oh, there's a bog there. Oh, there's a gold mining area there. Oh, there's there's uh, coal deposits. Okay, you guys need to go 30 miles north. So um, that's what happened during the Point Elliott Treaty is what it's called. But after all that, they decided to mine this area for um for uh anything and everything that they could but here it was a bog and so they mine mined the bog for uh they might uh and here's the little bog uh it's about 70 acres or 60 acres i'd say um maybe like a hundred hectares or so like the surface of the of the pond here and it's summer so it's kind of down a ways uh, and they've got a warning here, and I want to show you this pretty gnarly. Oh, a super chat. Sorry, I just noticed that. And Grant, what's up, man? Um, so, uh, Sonny Gordon, thank you so very much for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. And again, you guys, if you want to donate, I, obviously super chats, no problem with that. Thank you so very much. But if you want to donate to something where you'll get something back uh, specifically, you can donate to my trip to the AGA, the Aquatic Gardeners Association, um, the two-year national um, meetup. And man, that water is gnarly. Hold on. Let me try to get out farther without soaking myself because this water has a a hidden secret. So this water has algae in it, cyanobacteria and algae that are deadly to a lot of things, including like dogs. And it's mostly died back as there's been wind the last few days with this heat at night. The wind comes up, but it then pushes it all to the shore and it is gnarly. If it dries out and it turns into uh, a particle, it then, um, 
Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I got that mixed up, Mark. Sorry. Yeah, hectares are bigger than acres. My bad. In my head, I was thinking it was the other way around. So, yeah, it's the other way around then. It's about probably, what, 30 hectares probably then? So, and probably something like 70 to 100 acres. I, I really don't know for sure. But uh, I'm just guessing based on other little lakes in the area. But so you get the idea. It's probably a, maybe a quarter mile or you know, about 1,500 feet or something like that to the other side right here. And then the, it goes about, it's probably about half a mile long. It goes down this way too. Um, so it's kind of a, a narrow little lake that kind of is like a J shape. But this used to be a bog with cranberries, native cranberries and all sorts of really interesting stuff. Uh, and they're rehabbing it. So if you're interested in the story of the rehab of this lake, um, come check out my video from two years ago or my video from a year ago called Restoring a Bog. And the, I get all into this when it's mushroom season and into the trees they planted here and the logs they put down. It's been a, it's been over a 10 year process, three really intensive years. And uh, hey, here's uh, here's heal everything or everything uh, heal. And uh, this is an edible food. So are the plantains. They're a European food, but they're edible. They're always growing in parks in grass. It's also called white man's foot or white man's footprint because it means that the ground was beat up and depleted of nitrogen if they're growing there usually. Um, but we also have uh, some aquatic plants here, uh, including, let's see if you guys can kind of make it out, but you can see it sticking out of the water a little bit down there. Um, and then a little more right here. Uh, and this is, uh, right beyond the thistles is, uh, this is Brazilian, uh, ow, hold on guys. Got a horse fly me in the neck. Um, but yeah, so that's Brazilian, uh, mirafilum or, uh, milfoil essentially, Matt and Gross and mirafilum. And, uh, here, here is it out of water, what it looks like as a, 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 a terrestrial plant. And then we've got another little version of duckweed. Um, so let's see here. Let me set you guys up so you can see me take a couple scoops at things. Um, let's see here. And then I'll check back in with you in like one minute to 90 seconds or so. So I'm going to set you guys up right here. And come on, maybe I'll have to set you guys up right here. All right, let me see what's in focus. Okay, all right, and don't mind my butt.
All right. So we got something in the nasty shallows. We'll be moving soon. I just wanted to catch something for you guys to see. So I always wash my hands real thoroughly when I go fishing here. That's for sure. So I try to use a stick or something from the bank. And uh, this guy jumped out already. Uh, so it looks like we've got some bluegill babies here um maybe pumpkin seed fish they're real pretty when you first catch them yeah this one's a pumpkin seed hey this one's a pumpkin seed fish and he doesn't have his spots yet but he's got his purple his yellow and his green if you can see the colors um kind of sparkling but he doesn't have his dot by his ear yet and the pumpkin seed fish get their dot later in life and uh, whereas the uh, bluegills get it pretty readily, pretty quickly. And uh, we're going to take a look and see what other like food and bugs and stuff we got in here. Nothing really uh, large anyways. So we're going to shake it out. We got a couple in there now, two in there. So let's wait till we get a bass and then we'll take a look at them in the sun. And I'll talk about them a bit. But... Look how nasty this bog still is. It's not a, a great place. Um, also, we've got uh, like uh, <laughs> lots of mosquitoes, but we've got all sorts of indigenous plants, which is great that they've replanted. This California uh, heather, I, I can't remember the Latin name, uh, but it's, it's in the rose family and it's beautiful stuff. I want to say like Rowan. Is it Rowan? I think it's called Rowan. And uh, it is really pretty, but it grows nice roots deep quickly. So they put it on the edge of the water to try to catch uh, the, the mud and silt from sliding back in. Now, the last few nights I've come here and I've been carefully kind of digging out a couple areas to clear all that cyanobacteria um right over here and it allows me to see the fish and so if i'm prepared i can kind of run in like a pole vaulter sometimes and get something like and this is called shallow dip netting this is when you are going for the real shallow areas you really have to throw it out like a spear it's better to have uh, some cordage on the handle if you can this guy's real colorful and they lose it real quick getting stressed but they'll come back in a pond or whatever but this looks like a little bluegill he's just got blue and green and he's got a little black dot behind his gill probably a little bluegill um could be a pumpkin seed but probably a little bluegill and he's got that stripe pattern um, that a lot of rock bass have, but he doesn't have the red eye that the rock bass tend to have. So into the pond you go. We want to catch something different, though. Usually what I'm catching here is bass. Bass, bass, bass all day long is what I catch here usually. So I'm kind of surprised at what we're catching. Now we're going to do the one-handed Salisbury, or fall, what is it, Salisbury flop. The, uh, we just flick it. That's the worst way to dip net anything. They see the shadow coming, and they have time to get out of the way. You usually just get muck, plus the splash scares them out of the way. So what I wanted to do in this video tonight is show you a couple techniques. If you guys get one of these nets, I got this net from Jonah's Aquarium online. He sells a bunch of native fish, too, which is pretty cool. But this net has one extension on the handle, so it's got about... With my arms, it's got about a 10-foot uh, reach with my arm out. But the sun's coming from over here still, and uh, we're going to go under that tree soon, that willow tree, and try it there. But uh, so those were uh, bluegill and a pumpkin seed. They get about one to three pounds, the bluegills. Um, usually staying in the like one and a half pounds max range as adults. And then 
They're about a foot long at the very max, usually more like nine inches. And then the uh, pumpkin seed fish stay more like, oh, a big carp just jumped out there. Just flopped. Um, so, yeah, at night, I've been getting a lot of action here. This is where I caught that mirror carp and everything. Hey, Chattanooga Ed, what's going on? Good to see you, buddy. Um, Joseph Ariando, good to see you too. Okay, so um, now we're going to try my next little maneuver, but I got to set you guys down again. So sorry uh, about this constant moving and setting you down and all that stuff. And if you're seeing my boxers. But uh, basically what we do here is we're going to do what you would do in a canoe. And we're going to paddle like a J stroke and we stay out of the sight line of the fish we empty our net obviously and in theory you'd be real quiet but obviously i'm talking to you guys and then you literally just come up to the edge slowly and lunge out pull in as quick as you can back to the shore uh and you still have time to do it a few more times generally because the fish the big fish they'll scatter they'll they'll get out of dodge but the little fish oftentimes they'll come to shore and they'll try to go into the shallows and they'll hide under the leaves and reeds and that's where we can catch them because we're not out to get any trophy fish tonight and uh it takes quite a bit of strength and uh and speed to to do this maneuver through the water with a full net of of uh mulm and plants and all the everything else that's in the water but i'll pick you guys up again in a sec but we'll go to a spot where i can do it set you guys up and show it better but what we definitely try to do you throw out the net and with the sun where it's at you throw out a dip net out past where you're aiming. So if I want to hit right in here, I'll get my net out to here. Now the shadow coming of the net when I throw it like a spear, it scares the fish this way. They only have a cut bank to go into. And once the water's a bit dirty and muddy, they don't even have that. So they don't know where they're going. A lot of times they'll get mixed up and they'll just hide in any weeds or sticks. Luckily, this net is super sturdy. I can pull it through vines of any sort. And so I'll throw it and then I'll pull it back like this. I'm doing a slow-mo. And I'll pull it back. And then as it comes near the shore, I'll turn it and pull up so nothing can jump out. And do like a J paddle like you would in a canoe or a kayak. And that lets you get anything along the bank. It seems like common sense, but... I hand this dip net to people, and more often than not, they're like, well, what do I do? What do I do now? We're going to try one-handed joke net. Ugh. See how all the water comes into the shore? And this is some nasty algae-riddled, cyanobacteria-riddled water. Real gross stuff. Um, and so I always wash my clothes, my hands, the net, everything when... I go to any urban areas like this, but you'd be surprised. You think that this might be oxygen depleted. It's kind of stanky. It's not. Uh, the fish are still doing just fine. Over the surface area or, or creek or river, you're good to keep trying. I wouldn't ever eat anything in there. So let's try. Hold still for a minute. You guys can probably see the water here Ugh. and see here. I'm caught on a sticker bush on a Himalayan blackberry bush. This net is strong enough that I can literally just pull it off, which I haven't found in most nets unless they're like salmon nets or something. So the shadow of the pole is scaring off the fish big time. And so we're going to wait for a couple little fish to surface within arms range like that right there. They're eating water striders and mosquitoes out here. And the mosquitoes are eating me. So uh, in any case, we're going we're gonna to try again in a moment. And uh, I should probably set you guys down so I can do a proper toss. But I want to get you guys at least three species of fish on film to examine.
Nothing there. I'm going to try another cast over by these rocks. A lot of times the fish will just go to the nearest cover when they're little. When they're big, they'll just go back out to, into the deep water and they're gone. But here, they're not so smart. And again, sometimes you'll pull in these thick mats of algae and just junk. And uh, sometimes you'll catch fish in that, but usually it's just a pain in the butt. So we'll look at these fish before the sun go down. But let's go to my favorite little spot. Under the willow tree, where all the fish like to be. And... This is a much better situation. Hey, let go. Come on. These bushes came from Nepal and Tibet, and they've ruined my life since I was a kid. Uh, so over here, we're going to set down these little fellas. And over here, I'm going to set you all up over right here. Hopefully, I can catch something quickly, and then we can reflect on what went down. Basic snails. I just throw them on the shore because I hate them. All right, so now I've kicked up some dust. It's silk. Hey, check this out, guys. These are one of my favorites. It's an aquatic stick bug. It's about three or four inches long with his tail. And uh, he needs to go back in the water. I don't know if he turns into something else here. For months. All right, so the real place where I catch fish is under. So, see how from here we can actually see the water? Well, we can just like this angle, you guys can't see it because of the light. But can you see the little rings on the water of all these fish jumping out here as we get low? If we get low, You'll see how many bugs and fish there are. Maybe. I don't know how good the quality of the internet is here. But I also get exhausted doing this. I start sweating when it's 90 degrees out or 85 or whatever it is right now. I start sweating because you're throwing that net and you're pulling it in as fast as you can with water resistance. So it's worse than a paddle. It's, it's, it's like hauling an anchor or a bucket in uh, over and over. And so we're just looking for little bubbles. I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side of this tree, but not going to bring you guys because I need both hands to do it. So hopefully I can bring back a few different fish in one or two casts here. We'll see. Alright guys, 
So, I got some fish. I don't know how many. We'll see. Oh, we got a couple. All right. So, these guys are beautiful. These are largemouth bass. And uh, they're real pretty, actually. They're nothing colorful, really. I mean, they got some metallics and some green and yellow. Um, but we've got an endless supply of these size bass in this lake. They've got a yellow little tail. Let's put it in the water. This guy, look, he'll jump right out of the net. And they don't have any spines. Unlike the little sunfish or the catfish, they'll nail you. These guys won't. So I can put them in my net with no fear. And uh, we're going to try another attempt at that, and then we'll look at the fish in the light. It's a water scorpion, huh? Nymph nymph Nymphaeidae. They have an incomplete metamorphosis. Thank you so much, Morowena. Uh, I really appreciate that. I do want to cast net. They are illegal here. That probably won't stop me. <laughs> but uh, especially not in this lake where nobody, there's not even fishing regulations for this lake. All right, guys, so I'm trying to do this all on the quick for you guys. So I'll get my usual time to pretend I'm a great blue heron and get the more uh, scaredy cat fish. But check this out. This guy has pectoral spines. Look how purple he is. Probably a sunfish, a pumpkin seed fish. Just beautiful. We'll let him plop in the water. Also, we got another baby largemouth bass. Now, you can tell they're largemouth bass usually by the fact that their mouth comes back to their eyeball. See the mouth joint, the jaw? That's how you can tell they're a large versus a small mouth bass, foolproof wise. Um, a Sorry, guys. And crawdads are uh, also allowed in to be caught here. There are a ton of them, and they're huge for this area in here. But 
You don't want to eat them, obviously, because of all the poisoning in the water here of mercury and lead and pesticides and crap, literally, from both drainage from houses. So can you guys see the nice yellow tail? And the colors never show up on live streams as well. But the largemouth bass have a nice yellow pastel to green tail in these waters. And here we got a little sunfish, real purple and blue. He's a, he's a, and they look very similar to the bluegills, but the bluegills have more stripes on them and are less uh, purple and green and more blue and silver like that bigger guy. Whereas the littler guy is probably a pumpkin seed fish. It's hard to tell without seeing their, their ear spot, but when they're babies, you can tell this much at least. And these are all the same little bass, but it's as simple as that with the dip net. And if you take your time, uh, you know, just doing this over and over, you get some interesting stuff. So um, it's pretty cool. Let's see here. So all right, see how much I'm sweating? It's a very tiring thing, especially when it's hot out. I'm not used to the heat being a Seattleite. But we're going to throw these guys back because I have a ton in my pond. And now we're going to... Uh-oh. Uh Did you see my butt? I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. But we're going to send these guys back to whence they came. And uh, they're super hardy fish. I don't... I don't like make sure that they're breathing and pull them backwards to get water going through their gills. They, uh, uh, yeah, see, I told you there's no turning back from this stream. Anyways. Okay. We're done setting up that and casting because it's just too hard to do. And apparently my pants don't fit anymore. Uh, all right. So, we're going to hop over to the turtle pond right now because we have a little bit of time and a little bit of sunlight. So that's where we're going next, guys. And this, you don't have to, so I won't leave you. I won't let you, I'm not going to set you up and just leave you. We got some fish. I showed you what that was like, how I catch them. Uh, usually there's much more of an art to it, so to speak, where you stand still and try to, Imitate the trees and sway a little bit. Let your shadow get camouflaged by whatever's next to you. But, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, Alexander. I'm gonna put a blur thing on it. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. I actually do now that I'm uh, able to do all this physical stuff again when it, I was laid out for a year and a half between that and being on the prednisone and the testosterone and all the steroids I I, I, weigh, I weighed like 50 pounds more than I did before all of that and couldn't go hiking couldn't go fishing and now I'm out doing it daily and yeah, I don't have a pair of pants that fit. So <laughs> it's funny that you say that, but yeah, literally I do need to get some pants. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, I really, really appreciate it, buddy. Um, so what I always do when I'm done fishing here, I have alcohol. Get the 70%, the 90%, 91%. Evaporates too quickly. It won't kill much of anything. Whereas the 70%, will kill stuff. Anything less than 70% doesn't have enough alcohol, really, and won't for sure kill cyanobacteria and things like that. It will burn, and you know it's doing its job. And uh, I make sure to get my face, just because I accidentally touch my face a lot, then I grab a water bottle and wash it all off, and then I hit it with alcohol again, usually. Just because we're urban. We are in the urban area fishing, which is gross. 
especially this park. Uh, you know how I said I carry the kit to revive the dead? Well, uh, I usually also carry a sharps container because I usually end up clearing out a whole lot of those too if it's somewhere I don't go regularly. If I'm there all the time, then I always clean it up. So no biggie. But we're going to hop to the next little park um, and try to see if we can see ostrich feeding a turtle or or um, maybe even uh, great blue herons jumping down to get a, a, some fish, whatever it may be. So I wanted to show you how close these places all are in real time, like in an hour show, basically. We're a little over that. But again, thank you so much. Appreciate that so much, Alexander. Um, let's see, what's the quickest way? I guess it's probably to go straight. Um, so, yeah, um, I really appreciate it. What's going on, Chattanooga Ed? I still see you. Fish and Floral, what's up? Chew, what's up? Seth Fernandez, what's going on? It looks like you guys probably missed the um, the full moon that apparently happened while I was fishing. Uh, so that's probably a good thing. Now, I would normally never dream of live streaming while driving, but we're literally staying within a half mile of my house uh, and on streets where you can't go faster than 25, so... I'm not too worried about it tonight, but, uh, we are headed that, that place was known as Ronald Bog Park. And there's actually quite a bit of info on it on the internet. If you want to learn about the native American history and then the history of it being a junkyard, they literally pulled 137, I want to say cars out of there in the fifties. Um, and, uh, People just used it as a 100-foot deep pit once they'd mined all the peat moss out of there. And uh, it was just gross. And not to mention that, there was a gas station uh, catty corner from it. And uh, that was also uh, leaking slowly for years into the creek that flows out of that bog or pond there. And uh, that was causing all sorts of problems as well. Um Oh, I took the wrong street. This is the long way. Take the long road home. Bum, bum. But take the long road home. Um, ooh, the moon looks cool tonight. Anybody uh, already out there watching the moon? Because I'm watching the same moon as you. Only people watching a different moon are the Chinese. They're on the dark side of it with their little space mission Voyager thing that they've got. Um, let's see here. Um, let's, uh, Andrea Dingbat, what's up? Good to see you. Um, yeah, you know, I usually do bring a trash bag too, because there's always so much trash there. But the other thing I'll do is if I'm at a spot like that, especially just alone and not trying to be expedient with time is I will, uh, I'll use the, the net to pull in any of the algae or mats of anything growing that's invasive, uh, hyacinth or any of that stuff. I'll just bash it down so that there's an opening for the fish to feed because some of these lakes can get choked out. And especially in the Northwest, they are not used to having water over about 60 degrees, any warmer than that. And everything starts to go to hell and die, uh, especially for salmonid, you know, like trout and, and true freshwater species. Whereas if you're just talking about the warm water invasives, pumpkin seed fish, bluegills, they're not from Washington. They're from Eastern USA on the other side of the Mississippi. Uh, but they've been here for like 140 years. They've been here since. And uh, we're going to out right here. I'm going to show you my little Garden of Eden before it gets too dark. And uh, there might be a soccer game or something going on here. But we're not bringing the net or anything. And there's rabbits outside. Okay. Just let the... 
Blue Spotty, Spotty, uh, Spotty Scotty, uh, Wi Fi. Let's see here. Blue Reed. Hey, what's up? Mentioned that you were from Oregon. I'm all, uh, oh, you're talking, yeah. Uh, you did Let's turn this around. You guys can see the nature before I scare it all away. All right, hopefully you can stay with me. Zombie Cat, what's up? How are you, my dear? Great to see you. And BJ Palmer, great to see you too. Um, yeah, yeah, the blue are native. There aren't a lot of uh, fish native to um, Hey, let's try this frequency. Who got, you know, coyotes, squirrels, raccoons, skunks, mink? I don't know what they're here. All right, guys, we're going to Blair Witch it. I'm going to jog so that we can get to better coverage because I it's so annoying to watch someone with no coverage. We're going to try the far side of the lake, which has an open shot uh, while there's still daylight. Now, there's little rabbits everywhere in this park, and they're really stinking cute. This year, there's too many, though. And uh, 
they're eating all the vegetation in the undergrowth. Usually there's turtles sitting here. But we'll find some. I know where there's for sure going to be a northwest painted pond turtle. And uh, probably also a northern pond turtle. So, before we haven't cut out, I know I'm going to jinx it by saying that. But I think now that we're not like right under the cell tower, that we'll get better service. Hi. So we should have better service now that I've got a few hundred yards of, of line of sight from the lake. Again, thanks for coming out with me, guys. I know this is a niche live stream. Not everybody is into it. Same with the nature walk videos. But I always love going out and seeing what we see and see if we see something cool that you just can't script. Now, these lucky dogs, their backyard, they have access right to this pond. And they're allowed to launch their boat and go fishing. Because yet again, this is not a park, according to the Parks Department or the fish and wildlife around here. Uh, it is just a water collection point, a water basin uh, part. Now, we do have a bunch of uh, stinging nettle right here, which is no good. But right here, there is a family of bluegill uh, a bunch of babies under that tennis ball actually is where they're at. Uh, and I come here in the morning when the sun's right here. Uh, there goes a Coast Guard rescue helicopter. Uh, and I watch them swim around. And the babies come all the way into the shallows, like right here, like in an inch of water or less. And the dragonflies have all been spawning out here. It's been really cool to see. Then we've got uh, thimbleberries, salmonberries, Himalayan blackberries. Um, morning glory, and then check this out. This is pretty cool. Not it doesn't have anything to do with fish, but back here we've got some pretty old, uh, cut down, unfortunately, but pretty old, uh, dug fir and cedar and pine trees, as well as these huge poplars that were probably planted as a windbreak for a farm in the 1860s. Uh, when this area was first being homesteaded. So they probably cut those down recently. And uh, here's another view of where we were just at. So this is an even smaller lake than the last one, really a pond. And you can see the, the bank comes all the way up to in here in, in the wet season. So it goes up or down five or six feet, depending. And uh, yeah, so there's usually about... Eight or nine turtles in that side. And this is called Twin Ponds Park. So where's the other pond? It's right here. They're basically the same pond. So over here is where the beavers live. And that lake back there must have limestone or something in it or flowing into it. Because that park back there, that lake... Its pH is 7.8 to 8.2, depending on when I've tested it. This lake is 5.8 to 6.2, depending on when I test it. So this has maintained its actual boggy characteristics um, that are inherent to it. I don't see any herons fishing, but you can see the psychedelic swirls that the turtles and beavers create in the water. And I'll show you where I think the turtles will be hanging out. I've also got bat boxes and bird boxes, owl boxes. Super cool. Butt face, what's up? Good to see you. Um, so in here, this is supposedly the salmon stream with the gasoline shimmer and the iron on the bottom on the boot and the bucket and the needle in it. Um, so probably not the best salmon stream, but if you've seen me out 
catching uh, fish live. Oh, they're gone for the night. They're almost always three right on the log. The biggest turtles are always there fighting for that spot. But it looks like they're uh, underwater submerged with just their nose up for the night. That's how they tend to sleep here. But I think it's really pretty here because we get the native cattails and sword ferns. And it's an actual drop off with a cut bank because of how this was kind of a sinkhole and bog. And uh, apparently when they dredged it out, they found a whole bunch of bones and Native American relics going back at least 6,000 years. That was done in the 50s. It could have been way older than that, but their dating process wasn't the best and they contaminated everything when they did it. Um, looks like we're probably not going to see any, uh, any life out there. But how is everybody doing right now um, who's still with us? I knew this live stream was going to be a bit. I knew this live stream was going to be a bit niche, so I apologize. Um, so, I know it's going to be blurry. If it makes you sick, don't look at this screen, because we're going to walk back. Uh, if I see anything cool, I'll definitely turn it around. Uh, I'll turn around. Every now and then I fall apart. And I see... Wait. And I see duckweed right now. There's more duckweed than ever, and it's not native to our parks, and I hate it more than ever. Total eclipse of the pond. All right, guys. So maybe next time I'll just catch the fish ahead of time, uh, because all that really got accomplished, I learned this live stream, is you got to see my butt. <laughs> Now, if this were OnlyFans, that would be what you waited for the whole time. However, with the exception of maybe a few bears, I probably nobody waited for that. So thanks for sticking around nonetheless. Um, and thanks for the pair of pants, Alexander, if you're still here. Um, so yeah. Pardon me. All right. So here is a tunnel where I always get it's not a real tunnel. It's a metaphorical tunnel where I always get eaten alive by mosquitoes. So what was the lesson of today? There was no lesson. But if you want to see footage from the AGA that is far less shaky and that is the Shed Aquarium, which is the oldest in North America uh, or South America, and if you want to see uh the wildlife and fish outside of chicago and in the suburbs and urban areas of chicago where i won't get shot um you can help fund my trip to the aga the aquatic gardeners association and you'll get to see that plus i don't think any youtubers really are going so i don't know anybody that is going to be showing you guys oh, of course there's a great blue heron taking off right over there uh, I don't know anybody who is going to be uh, interviewing any of the people at AGA. Some of the incredible aquarists. I mean, George Farmer is going to be there. Uh, Crystal Castleman. Karen Randall. Uh, who else is going to be there? Um, Northern Scapes, I think, is going to be there. If you, check, if you see him on uh, Instagram ever, pretty cool stuff he does. Most of the aquascaping shop owners in the country tend to go. Um, so it's a pretty cool event that doesn't get much coverage because it's every two years. But if you want to support me going, or if you want to go yourself, that would be rad. I'd get to meet you there. Check out this tree. Looks like a little tree. It's not a little tree. It's a biggie tree. And it goes up a good 200 feet. It's a sequoia. So, uh, hey, Alan, what's up, dude? You missed, uh, let's see, what did you miss? My butt, uh, the bulk of the people. And then them leaving. And then uh, you missed us catching some bass and a bluegill and a, and, uh, a pumpkin seed fish. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, not that much happened, actually. Um, 
But uh, you were pretending to be an adult. Lame excuse. Uh, Gavin Galaka joined the stream after moving my cherry shrimp to uh, uh, to the tank. <clears throat> I'm taken to my dorm. By the way, the shrimp pregnancy video of yours is a good watch. Well, I'm glad to hear you like it. There's a new one that's actually about that. There's an old one that's just me talking about my tank. And so many people were like, you didn't go over the steps of pregnancy. And I was like, this video is from when I started my channel, like almost six years ago. So, no, it was just a video journal that like maybe 18 people saw. Maybe Alan saw it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I redid it and made the actual truth about the four steps of pregnancy in shrimp and showed them all. So if you're wondering about that, uh, there's a video about it. Bog. Bog. Uh, so yeah. Um, there's also baby bunnies everywhere, but right now with um, StreamYard, which I thought would be best for uh, because on YouTube, if you get kicked off service-wise, you're just done. It's done. One attempt, you're done. Uh, on StreamYard, it gives you a bunch. Let's Okay, let's try this because it's sitting still. For all of us softies in the audience. Wait, that's not right. All right. There's a baby bunny on the trail. I can't zoom in. So I'm going to walk towards him until he freaks out. Well, he freaked out quickly. Um, and I don't know whose knucklehead idea it was to plant bamboo in this park. They're an idiot because it just spread everywhere. Now the park's trying to get rid of it. I think they were trying to do like a botanical, like, like a taste of all the continents when they started this park in the, in the 40s. And they put some cool things in, chestnut trees and walnuts and pecan trees, stuff that's from the south. And, and then like some Asian stuff, some little vine maples and stuff like that. Oh, I'm sure it's too dark for you guys to see the bunny right now, but he's right there. All right, we're not going to chase the bunny down. But it has crossed my mind, like, could you catch a bunny in a net? And the answer is, I'm sure, yes, but why would I? Oh, there he is. He's so cute. They're always cute, Alex. Bunnies will always be cute. Nobody cares. This is a fish channel. Bunnies will always remain cute. And it has nothing to do with the channel. Uh, <laughs> you saw the bunny! Yeah! Well, the, the ones that are around this year, they're not the invasive kind. They're the northwest kind. Well, actually, we have five species in our state. We have the eastern cottontail, which for some reason also is here. Then we have the northwestern cottontail. And then we have the mountain cottontail. You see a theme with the names? Then we've got the desert hare and the northern hare. And then we also have the uh, snowshoe hare, which is actually the same species as the northern hare. But it's a different phenotype or whatever, I think. So just a different. It's a white bunny with big feet. Um, and it's not cute. It's kind of scary looking. The hares are not as cute as the bunnies. Uh, and, and they don't taste as good, apparently, either. Never eaten a hare, though. I don't know. Try not to eat hair in my food. Be very, very quiet. We are hunting hares. Uh, <laughs> Zombie Cat says, I have seven bunnies. Good for mostly pooping. Yeah. All right, guys. Do we have any questions that I've been neglecting uh, this stream? I know it was a weird stream. I thought I'd try it out. There's the freeway right there. So.
Sponsor me, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to head back to my place where there's Wi-Fi. And then we'll call it a night. Um, but I just wanted to show you how close all of this is to me um, to brag because I like Washington. Except for the fact that I live four blocks from the freeway and we hear uh, the rumble strips and when they release their compression brakes or when there's like air hoses releasing and stuff, then I hear... <laughs> Or God forbid, a wreck. Man, that's when I hear boom, and I, I the few wrecks we've had in the year and a half we've been here, uh, you can feel them in the house when cars smash into anything. Even, I, and the two we've had that I I heard for sure and was like, was that a what was that? Was that a wreck or something? Um, and then you know I checked the news and it's like sure enough on the freeway right by our house there's a wreck. Uh, that stuff is. Um, it's loud, and it, it makes a big old thud. Uh, it's kind of impressive. I guess it's like a big old gong or sh piece of sheet metal getting displaced like air. Displacing that air, um, plus the, the car crashing. So I hate this dome light. It doesn't turn off for a moment. But check out how close I am to this park. This park, I always walk to. I'm only driving because y'all are with me. And by y'all, I mean you 70 loyal sons of a guns who I love more than anything. You guys rock. Uh, and this is where I saw the coyote right here on this street that we're about to turn on to. This street that you can see out the side window. With uh, And this is where they dump all the stolen cars. Right here. Um, love it. There's like a new stolen car once a week, if not more, right on this street. I don't know why they dump them all here. It's like some some gang's habit habit or something. I was going to say habitat. That too. So, we are... Hey, Evan. What's going on? You are a pretty cool bunch. That is right. Let's see here. And you can really feel it if you're in the vehicle slash helicopter. Yes. Oh, look at that. My house is there. And I, I doubt the aperture will focus on the moon. But the moon is right there over my house. And I can see my wifey watching some dumb uh, reality TV show in the house waiting for me. My loving wife. Um, so we are back home everybody and uh this is where we will do another rundown i don't know why i wanted to show you the whole process but i did um all right well i'm not going to show you guys my address uh, the ones who are important have it. And basically, you just have to ask if you want to send me something, uh, a note or something. Uh, I love old school mail and letters. Uh, all right, Matt Dowling, thank you so much for the $5 uh, super chat. Really appreciate it, buddy. And uh, I'll say it one last time. If you do want to contribute to my AGA fund, that's awesome. There's a link pinned in the chat. And uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, I hope you guys had a little bit of fun seeing what I do literally every morning from 4.30 or 5.30. Well, whenever the sun comes up. When the sky starts to get blue, I get out in my truck, drive to where I'm going to go. And that way, as soon as the sun crests the horizon, I'm at that body of water. And I've been doing that. Um these two are just so close to my house. I figured why not, but I've been doing that like driving at least a half hour to an hour. Most days before there's any traffic in the middle of the morning or night, whatever you want to call it, like four 30. And then, um, you know, I'll just stay up at night, go out fishing to like 10 AM or dip netting. And then I'll come back and anything interesting I'll film. Hey, Chattanooga Ed, thank you so much for becoming a member. I highly appreciate it, buddy. Um, I do, I do, I do. Um, and Matt Dowling, you can rewatch it later. It was okay um, reception-wise in the park when I was dip netting. 
but um the reception started to cut out and and when i moved and i'm sure it made people motion sick um i'm gonna try to get a gopro so that you don't see my butt when i'm fishing so you see my point of view and my hands can be free i need to get a vest and one of the good gopros that's waterproof so that's the next thing i need to get for the channel but you guys probably if you've been watching know that i just upgraded all the sound and audio stuff for when i normally stream but this is all on my phone with a little wireless mic and uh a little lav mic thing but i'm glad you liked it ed um and uh just wanted to let you guys in on you know what goes into when i do a video where i'm like here's a sunfish let me tell you about this fish like when i catch a fish this is what goes into uh that story essentially um but yeah thank you so much guys if there's no questions i'm gonna roll out of here man hello uh and uh thank you so much for joining me you guys uh, i love it when you do and hopefully next time we won't be so motion sick uh or selfish with me talking about this aga funding thing alan made me do it and look at that there goes the sun here comes the sun to australia here comes the sun oh no to the uk it's all right no wait no it's australia do 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 um it's all right you see how effed up my windows are that's the inside i'm such a degenerate with the mess i make but hey it's a truck that's what trucks are for eh um so i'm still getting bit by mosquitoes even at my house so i'm gonna get out of here because i haven't seen any questions and uh, oh it's 1 40 p.m so i guess who's waking up the uk who's waking up Who's waking up? Lahore, Pakistan? I don't know. Lahore? Uh, Bangladesh? I don't know. That would be too close to Australia. Um, A Strat 82. Where am I located? I'm in Seattle, Washington, uh, in the US. And again, I'm washing myself down with the alcohol. Then I'm going to. Uh, hopefully, not getting too much in my mouth. Uh, 70%. Remember, always use 70%, not 90. 90 evaporates too quick. If you get 90%, cut it with distilled water. So it's 80. Well, it should be anywhere between 55. Well, ex, the, the, the actual number is 57.5 and uh, 80%. I think it was like 81% or something are the useful quantities for rubbing alcohol. Hey, you're in Spokane. Right on. Well, I am logging off right now, but you can go back and watch the stream. You'll even get to see a full moon for a moment when I threw it. Apparently, probably going to pull that out once this all reloads to spare the future generations. But I'm going to log off before I accidentally show a bunch of addresses. And I want to thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, mods. Thank you, those of you who are in the replay crew. Thank you so much uh, for all you super chatters, Alexander. That is crazy. Uh, the hundred bucks is always just blows my mind. You're the best. I have blood on my leg and I'm like, what is it from? But it's from me literally just backing a mos or swatting a mosquito with my other foot. And it just popped onto my leg, like a little paintball of blood. All right, guys, well, I'm going to get out of here and, uh, excited to have the new members, including you, Ed. And, uh, thanks again, everybody. I'm out. Uh, have a great evening and, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. If, okay. Last time, sorry, not sorry. Alan Bauer says, here's the link to the GoFundMe. It's in the live chat. It's also right here on the screen and it'll be in the description or in the comments pinned. And then, uh, if you guys do fund uh, my little expedition, you'll get six videos, uh, Eventually. I mean, I don't know when I'm going to edit them all and everything, but you guys will get six videos from the trip, including hopefully a tour of the Shed Aquarium, which is the oldest aquarium in North America. Uh, also, you will get uh, anybody I interview. I'm hoping to get Crystal. I'm going to bugger and bugger and bugger because uh, I talk to her a lot, but she just doesn't like interviews. Um, maybe I can get a German translator and do Your English isn't so good. Uh, it, it's not bad at all. So um, anyways, there's going to be lots of people there. And hopefully I will see some of y'all there too. If anybody lives in the Chicago land area or is planning on going. 
All right, guys, I am uh, going to get out of here now. Yes, and I cut my hair, and I, I'm going to give it to uh, someone who makes wigs for, for cancer or for kids without hair. I don't care what it's for. Um, as far as it, it just it needs to go to a good cause, one, one of them. So I'll do the research because apparently wigs for kids or whatever is um, – or locks of lug. Both of those are probably bum sites or bum charities, according to the chat. So – I have to figure it out. Um, oh, it's all good, Matt. I'm gonna spend the money that I that I get from this whole month from YouTube on that trip because you know we still have to do like I mean a thousand bucks that Alan set as the money. That's like the bare minimum to fly me out there. You know, if we get meals every day for five days, four nights, um, plus you know. So any of this money can go to like getting new plants. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna try to do is kind of earmark some of the live the super chat money for plants and things like that uh, so when i come back i can share them with y'all and also grow them and and share the cuttings with the community later uh but in any case i'm gonna get out of here thank you so much for watching uh here's the new hair once again if you're just getting here and i am going to sign out also everyone can watch fishery this month four episodes all about fish history academia and uh, you can uh, check out those episodes. Uh, I filmed them last night, right after I cut my hair in the middle of the night. And uh, yeah, so uh, you can watch those if you want to keep going with the fish tree. Uh, all right, guys, I'm out. I've been rambling long enough. Thank you so much, everybody, and mods too. Bye.